Alrighty. So I guess we're live, officially. Um, we have more people joining, which is awesome. Um, I might as well just wait a couple minutes and see people are kind of popping in. Shelly, hey. <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good. Anything exciting going on? Uh, I was eating food. Is there a way that where I could like turn off the sound so I could still eat and not like bother everybody? You yeah, so on the yeah. Huh? Yeah, you, yeah, you can eat stuff. If you, Jason and I are talking at the same time. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, if you just move your mouse around, you get a little toolbar at the top. Uh, and the second icon is a mute button. Okay. And I also have control on my end as the host. So if anybody does join and I can see like the volume spiking or something, I can mute them. Um, so that's awesome. So there's going to be quirks, there's going to be hangups, but having this being broadcast on YouTube should help out quite a bit. I'm expecting that um, most of the people that will probably see this in the future will be on you know the YouTube stream. Um, so we're just going to hang out and not, you know, take anything too seriously, I guess. Um, so this is, um, I might as well just start going. Um, Do it. I mean, geez. So uh, if anybody that is watching doesn't know who I am, uh, my name is Jason Webb, and I'm a maker based in Nebraska. Uh, I'm finishing up a master's degree in instructional technology. Uh, and then this summer, I'll be going to the Omaha Children's Museum to work as a Maker Corps mentor. Uh, and one of my co-mentors, Shelly, has joined to hang out, so that's cool. Um, so what I do as part of my graduate degree is um, I have a background in, in computer science and with electronics engineering. Uh, they used to be hobbies, and I kind of turned them into what I want to do for a living. Uh, and that kind of got rolled into my educational background, uh, what I've been doing as my degree. So now I combine them both, and I'm trying to find ways of bringing advanced, interesting, contemporary technology, uh, things that seem really simple and obvious to people that are in the maker's movement, uh, but bringing that kind of to a simpler level so that people who have never heard of the making maker, never heard of the maker's movement, or have ever played with electronics or programming, um, hopefully they can gain something out of this. Um, so this assistive technology workshop, we're going to be looking at how to use the Makey Makey, and I'll explain what that is in a little bit if you don't know what that is. Um, and what I was doing last year was I realized that there's a lot of problems um, that are actually pretty easy to solve for engineers in the world of uh, assistive technology. There's a lot of technology out there. But if you have had any experience with building your own interfaces for people that need them, um, I'm willing to bet that most of the things that you found, if not all the things you found, are extremely expensive, um, very hard to use because they're based on relatively old design principles and not a lot of documentation. Um, so now with the maker's movement and with open source hardware, uh, there's a community that supports each other. Uh, and that's how I got involved. I realized. Um, what's simple to me, making you know uh, a big red button that hits the space bar for you, um, that seems like it's almost not even worth doing because uh, it's so easy to do. Uh, but then you talk to people in your community that might need that thing, and you can just blow their mind because that kind of thing would cost $100, $200 the traditional way without having that skill set. Um, so we're just going to be looking at using one device uh, called the Makey Makey. And with us today, we actually have Eric Rosenbaum. hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Sounds good. And he's one of the co-creators, co-inventors of the Makey Makey kit. Um, you're still a student, a uh, uh, master, a PhD at the MIT Media Lab. Is that right? Still working on it. Should that's awesome. PhD up this summer. Stay there as long as you can. That's that's heaven on earth as far as I'm concerned. So <laughs> you a great can get place to be, yeah. a lot of good stuff done. Um, so uh, him, Eric and his partner Jay Silver, uh, they developed a kit called the Makey Makey, and you buy it for fifty bucks. You get a box like this, and it's packed full of stuff. You got a circuit board, 
you have some USB or USB cables that it plugs into your computer, and you have some alligator clip wires and bare wires. Um, and what we're doing today is figuring out how to take this kit, which um, will make a lot more sense in about five, ten minutes, and see how we can construct interfaces out of cardboard and aluminum foil and found objects um, to create an interface that is built for a specific user for specific tasks um, so that you can cheaply and quickly um, just hack together things to help people use their computer more easily. Um, so right up front, I want to say that I'm not a trained assistive technology professional. I'm not an occupational therapist. Um, if you are using uh, this technology for someone who genuinely has a need, um, most of the time they are working with or have contacts with um, an OT, an ATP, somebody like that in their lives. Um, so I would recommend before actually implementing this technology, giving it to the user, just running it by them and getting kind of a thumbs up, um, seeing if they're okay with the intervention that they're going to be providing. And most of the times they will, um, but there are certain things that I might not be aware of just being on the outside of the field. Um, and for example, what's most obvious to me is creating interfaces for people that have a physical disability. Um, a lot of times that's visually obvious. Uh, you can look at them, you can speak to them, and you can have a conversation about what's easy, what's difficult, and get um, a simple solution figured out. Uh, what's more difficult for someone like me is uh, behavioral or cognitive disabilities. Those are equally important. Um, and AT does play a role in uh, those people's lives. Um, but I don't have personal experience with people with those types of disabilities. So uh, if you're able to work with someone in a position like a speech language pathologist or anybody who's uses technology for therapy or in some way for that person, uh, I highly encourage um, getting feedback from them. You know, you can make your ideas, sketch them out, design a prototype out of cardboard, um, and get some feedback. And, and maybe you can learn something and they can learn something. Um, this is really the, uh, a stepping stone for uh, some discourse in the future. So um, I think, let me make sure I'm getting everything I want to say. Um, so this is obviously going on live uh, right now. This is Easter Sunday, April 20, 20th. Um, but uh, this is also being broadcast live, streamed live to YouTube. And it's also being recorded to YouTube. So after about half an hour or so, when this is done, uh, this will be totally available on YouTube. Um, so the way I'm going to take advantage of that is to keep the actual live workshop um, down so that no one's here for two, three hours, you know. I'm going to try to keep this down to about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so there will be spots where I'll say, um, you know, now pick up this device and try to hack something together, you know, wherever you would do some work. Um, Watch the YouTube video afterwards and just hit pause. Do whatever you want to do. Come back to it in a day. Um, I'm going to just run through the entire process and kind of help you figure out from beginning to end um, how to use the Makey Makey in general to, you, to make AT interfaces. Um, so the biggest question, the most obvious question that everybody's probably going to have is, um, what is the Makey Makey? I showed you the circuit board and the kit. Um, but for people that uh, are not technology people, or even people that are technology people, uh, this is still a really innovative device because um, it does things that we're familiar with. It allows us to uh, hit keyboard keys and mouse buttons and create mouse movements on our keyboard or on our computer without actually having an actual keyboard or mouse. So the circuit board has some programming and some electronics built into it that allow you to plug in a USB cable to your computer so that this circuit board, when it's plugged into your computer, it looks identical to a keyboard and a mouse, a USB device. Um, so there's no drivers to install. There's nothing special to do. And I think that's a, a big selling point for assistive work, set technology work, uh, because you can actually plug this into a computer, for example, um, that might be locked down if you're a teacher and you have a, a laboratory environment. Um, sometimes you have to have a special computer for this one person who might need it. Um, but if they have their own interface that's attached to their wheelchair or their person, 
Um, they can plug in a Makey Makey, and there's nothing to install, so there's nothing to block on a lot of computers. So uh, I think there's a big advantage there um, of just having it be as simple as possible electronically. Um, so the actual circuit board doesn't have doesn't have any buttons. It doesn't have any switches on it. Uh, so it might be confusing. How can you actually use it to hit the space bar or the left click on your computer for you? And that's what all the wires inside the box are for. Um, you'll notice that on the circuit board there are pairs of holes and really nice artwork on there that shows you. Um, hey, this is an up arrow, the down arrow, the space bar, the left click, and then on the bottom we have an earth bar. So the main goal that we're trying to do is we're trying to connect the metal parts of whatever the button is that you want to press, we're trying to connect that to the earth. Um, as soon as the Makey Makey sees that, um, that say for example the space bar is being touched to the earth bar, uh, it will automatically hit the space bar on your computer exactly as if you would hit it on your normal keyboard. Uh, and it includes a lot of little alligator clip wires. You can just take these and clip them right on to the pairs of holes. And as soon as you clip this on or touch it to the earth bar, the light will turn on on the top of that uh, function and the key will be pressed on your computer for you. Um, and that's how everything on this board works. That is literally the only thing that you have to know is to find ways, creative ways, to connect the functions of the Makey Makey board to the earth bar. Um, and using a wire is probably the most boring way you could do it because it is designed to um, go through different kinds of objects. So for example, uh, if I had one of these alligator clip wires and I clipped it onto the space bar and I just held the other end with my hand, whenever I use my other hand or any part of my body to touch or tap the earth bar, that will also work. It's going through my body. It's sensing the connection through whatever I'm touching. Um, so you can use many, many kinds of objects. Anything that is even slightly conductive uh, will work. And the way to find out whether it's conductive is to wire it up and try it out. Um, you can try plants, fruits, people, aluminum foil. Um, there's an incredible number of things to try, and people are still figuring out things that work. Um, you can go onto the Makey Makey website, makeymakey.com, and you can find a ton of example projects and gain some inspiration for objects that other people use uh, to make their Makey Makey do things for them. Um, in this workshop, we're going to focus a lot on um, aluminum foil and cardboard, uh, just because of the, the ease of use of um, having a common language, a common set that we're all kind of working on. Uh, but later on, you can upgrade materials, you can experiment based on what's most comfortable for the user, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, for the non-technical people, uh, literally just plug this thing into your computer and uh, include it in the box and on the Makey Makey website. There are videos, there are tutorials, there are photos, uh, and even in my Instructable, which this workshop is based on, um, I include a few examples of uh, how you can start playing with this and experimenting with materials to have fun. Uh, so that's the very first step, is just to play with the Makey Makey and get comfortable with it before you even worry about any kind of assistive technology at all. Um, once you're comfortable with that, um, now we've got to really look, look at the user that this interface is being built for. A lot of times people, they will get a, a basic idea of what the user wants to do, or sometimes they will just look at the technology and think it's cool, and they'll try to make it work for their user. Uh, but now we can make our own interfaces, so we should really include the user in the entire process. Uh, have them understand, just like you understand now, what the Makey Makey is. Let them play with it for a little while. Find some ways of using it together. Um, and when, once you're comfortable, just work with the user to identify things that they do a lot or they want to do on their computer. Um, these can be things like checking their email or playing a video game, playing music. Um, 
just whatever they would use, do on their computer, or even just look at what you do a lot on the computer, um, and try to boil down these complex tasks like um, play music or play video games, try to figure out the sequence of individual key presses and mouse movements that you have to do to make that thing happen. Uh, the Makey Makey isn't going to do uh, sequences for you. It's going to let you hit the keys um, through objects, whatever you want. So uh, if you hit the space bar, it's, um, it's not going to do anything different than what your normal keyboard space bar would do, unless you have some complicated scripts on your computer. Um, so boil down your processes um, and try to figure out really simple, obvious things that people can do. Uh, in the Instructable, I list a few things that I have found that may be a good starting point for you. Um, things like um, communication, so you can use the keys to trigger MP3 files to place sounds so they can communicate or, or do an entire sentence by pressing the W key, for example. Um, and some needs, they go beyond just functional things. Um, some people, they already have a system set up that allows them to move their mouse or do really functional, practical things. Maybe they need something that helps them uh, just improve their quality of life a little bit, just play a video game, do something for fun. Uh, you would be amazed at how little support that kind of thing, making music, for example, um, you'll find in assistive technology commercial hardware. Um, so if the user is excited about using this thing, they will be much more likely to use it. So work with them from day one to figure out what do they want to do um, and just hack with them to figure out uh, how you both can help get there from wherever you are. So I'm curious, um, on my instructable I, I have things like uh, links to tutorials of how you can um, use functions that are built into your operating system, Mac or Windows, uh, there's a lot of stuff already available that you can use um, just based on key presses. Uh, there's gaming applications that you can do. A lot of games just use the mouse and maybe the WASD keys, uh, which is why I believe they're on the Makey Makey uh, to use. Um, gaming is phenomenal. So uh, I was wondering if anybody that's joined the Hangout has any ideas for um, if you could only hit things on the, on the keyboard, like 10 keys, um, what kinds of things would you think about doing that would give you the most impact? Um, do you think you know any programs or any kinds of um, links that you could share, anything at all, experiences that you've had? Your, uh, <clears throat> your summary there was, was excellent, actually. It's clear that you've thought about and uh, tried out a lot of things. Uh, and also the, the listing that you mentioned in that Instructable is pretty awesome. I was just looking at it. Good. Cool. Uh, uh, and you have quite a few things, uh, and it's annotated nicely. Um, so I, that's definitely worth looking at for people. Um, some of the, the free programs that will trigger sounds, uh, the various simple one-button games and other games that you can try. Um, and there are also these programs that will launch applications, depending on your operating system. Um, that's super cool. Um, one thing that you didn't mention, which may be relevant <coughs> to people, is uh, Scratch. Yes. Um, so Scratch is a free, uh, friendly programming environment. It was designed also by the same research group that I'm, that Jay and I are part of. Um, and it goes like peanut butter and jelly with, uh, with the Makey Makey because it's one of the easiest ways that I've ever seen to make something happen when you press a key. Um, but with Scratch, you get to choose what happens. So instead of relying on someone else's software, you can program it yourself. Uh, and the way that you do that is by snapping together these graphical blocks on the screen. So one of them might say, for example, when the space key is pressed, and then you have all these other blocks, and one of them says, play a sound, uh, and then you can record the sound yourself, and then you snap those two blocks together, and now when you press the, sp the space key, that sound plays. And of course, you can trigger that now using the Makey Makey. Um, so that's super handy. One other thing I'll mention, this will be more relevant in the future, uh, there is a new extension mechanism that we're adding to Scratch that will enable people uh, to write their own uh, extended functionality for Scratch. Um, so for example, my roommate just made a uh, text-to-speech block. So basically adding new graphical blocks to the language to make Scratch do things it couldn't do before. 
Uh, and I imagine that there will be a lot of really powerful assistive technology uses for that. Yeah, speech to text, that's a great thing to hear. Uh, that's one of the, uh, the holy grails that everyone's like, um, they start off with like, okay, that's cool. Now, how do I speak? And I'm like, yep. oh, that's, that's kind of a leap. That's kind of hard to do right now. So with this summer, uh, I'm sure Shelly and I will be working with Scratch quite a bit to teach uh, kids and families. Um, so that's something that I, I keep seeing on the web all the time. Everybody loves using it. Uh, and it's a great way to get people interested in and uh, actually producing useful things on their computer. So that's a great suggestion for sure. Cool. Well, I made a cat piano just recently using uh, the Makey Makey. And uh, um, what I want to do with the, I just used the piano site that was on the Makey Makey website. But mm -hmm. uh, using Scratch, I could probably like program cat sounds, right? So instead of like piano sounds, they could be different cat sounds. Totally. Yeah. And when you say cat piano, did you mean that the piano keys in this case were actual living uh, cats? Oh, no, no, just drawings of cats. <laughs> nothing. nothing I've, I've seen a dog piano made of dogs. It is technically possible. I think it would probably be way harder with cats because you'd have to get them to agree to do this. Um, <laughs> seems <laughs> unlikely. Yeah, do you have that, that cat piano laying around? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, it's behind me, so... <laughs> nice. It was pretty pretty nicely built, too. So this is a, the cat piano, and then you could, um, let me take it out here. This is the setup with using the Makey Makey. It's just a piano, and then uh, I made it so you could pull the different ones and it'll make sounds. It's not hooked up to the computer right now, but when you pull it, it was each of the piano, so. That's really beautiful. It's worth emphasizing, I think, that um, that's, a, that's a fairly complex example. Um, you can make much simpler things uh, with, you know, without all the mechanical stuff and decoration. And, um, oh. It's just about touching two things together to trigger. Yeah, and, and uh, the major reason I did it is because I was thinking of the peril um, elect electricity or whatever because I didn't want to ground myself to the earth. So mm -hmm. what I did instead is I grounded it to uh, the wood. And then mm -hmm. it, it had the connection. That's it. So that way you didn't actually have to. Because uh, with regular Makey Makey, you have to ground yourself with the other part. And I wanted to have a system that you didn't have to ground it. You could just pull levers and it'll be self-sustaining, basically. It's an important point um, and something that sometimes people are confused about with Makey Makey because the examples that you often see involve the person being grounded and they touch something, a fruit, a uh, piece of Play-Doh, a metallic object, a drawing, to trigger a key on the keyboard, they assume that that's like a requirement. But actually, the person doesn't have to be in the loop. So in, like in your example, Shelly, you can just make a switch that has two pieces of um, conductive material touch each other. And there are really simple ways to make a switch. You can just um, you know, fold a piece of paper in half and then clip the Makey Makey to one side and clip to the other side. And as long as there's some conductive material, on the inside, on both sides, like some foil, maybe some aluminum foil. If you take, take mm -hmm. this now you have a switch that you can close just by squeezing this together, and then it'll yeah. pop apart again. I, I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's all a bunch of switches because it's a parallel oh, yeah, yeah. Um, system. So that's exactly what I did. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's really nice. And while I was looking at that just now, um, I just realized that as, as funny as, it might think, as you might think this is, um, that device could actually be used as an assistive technology device. Um, there are people that use that need to make their own really specialized interfaces uh, to do therapy. So, for example, uh, you can go online and buy a, a pull switch that's just a cord that you pull on, and that person gains the ability to. Uh, they're they're tr they're testing out, they're training their dexterity and pulling motions. Um, and that could be uh, an occupational therapist kind of application where that, that could lead them to practice how to open doors or to, to grab objects and uh, that kind of thing, especially with the, uh, the tabs being small popsicle sticks, uh, that requires the person to use a couple of fingers to grab mm -hmm. it and then pull it. So by using a device like that, a person could, uh, you know, um, 
do some rehabilitation if they have wrist or finger problems. Uh, and the idea would be that if the person, if the, if the occupational therapist knows about the Makey Makey and is free to be creative, um, they can make 50 of those types of things out of cheap materials uh, for really specific movements and tasks and yeah. have them all be built in a day instead of having to research and buy and wait and all that. For example, um, in, instead of the little popsicle stick, which would require two fingers, so that's a certain type of task, you could instead imagine having like a loop of wire or something yeah. attached to it. And then you wouldn't have to use any fingers at all. As long as you could you know, get in there and pull, that would be a totally different task. But mm -hmm. all it requires is just attaching something different to those popsicle sticks. And ah. you can build both, and they're still a tenth of the cost of commercial use. Yeah. Could, it, could you yeah. use like Scratch and other programming? I'm sure you can, where you can you can even measure like how much pressure the pulling does. Like uh, I I don't know exactly what would go into there, but like you, where when you pull it, you can actually measure the weight and everything too. So, a limitation of the Makey Makey is that it's really just about on and off, so it can't really measure continuous um, quantities like that. Um, so that would require going to another another system with sensors. It's definitely doable, and maybe the Makey Makey is a way for people to start to build simple things uh, and then get into more complex uh, systems. Definitely. Um, yeah, and I think um, what we're going to talk about now is that um, once we kind of know what the, the person wants or needs to do, and we get an idea of what they're capable of doing. Uh, on my Structable, I have, let me share the screen. Um, I have a chart that you can go in and fill out. Um, so you can find a person, and you can go through all their individual movements and kind of gauge how difficult or how easy relative to each other each of these movements are. Uh, so you can have a, a kind of a list to choose from of, uh, okay, they can move their elbows and they can move their fingers okay. So maybe this cat piano idea would be a, a possibility or pop into your head after that. So this you can combine with the, uh, the needs and get a kind of picture of, um, okay, now what can I build that uh, they can do what they, um, they want to do using what they're able to do. And... Um, I have um, some examples to kind of get you going of interfaces that I've thought of that might be helpful. Um, you can kind of imagine these things as, as uh, early prototypes. Uh, just think of bridging connections on the Makey Makey. Just like Eric and Shelley were talking about, um, the person doesn't need to be physically clipped into or touching um, the system. Uh, I'll show you a prototype in a second that I built uh, where they're just bridging two pieces of aluminum foil so they don't have to actually be wired up in any kind of way. And some people kind of get nervous, uh, believe it or not, if they are totally new to the Makey Makey or electricity, uh, if you're wiring up a person, they might go, wait a second, there's electricity going through this person's body? And rather than trying to sit there and explain electricity, you can just go, well, let's build something that doesn't require them to be wired up just to get this going. <laughs> Sometimes that helps. Um, so I have a bunch of examples that you can go through on my Instructable. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, in the description below, uh, I'll add a link to the Instructable so you can go and check all these images and, and figure out what's good. Um, and these are all based on uh, specific kinds of movements. For example, this person, maybe, maybe they can move their knees up and down. Um, that would be enough for them to just touch their knees through like aluminum foil knee pads to a bar that's laid over their armrests. Uh, maybe they can shrug or move their, their neck. You can tilt uh, to, their, um, to their shoulder and have patches on their, on their clothes of some kind. Or maybe just tilting left and right and touching um, contacts that are on their sides in their wheelchair. Mm. Um, so these are ideas um, that I thought of in a few days just based on randomly filling out that body mobility chart and seeing, um, okay, if they can only move these things in this way, how do I put aluminum foil on cardboard in their way so that they can actually touch it and be comfortable? Um, so 
what I've done is um, kind of got the process going. If you have ideas for sketches, even if they're just on paper, um, you can comment on anything, leave me a note, and I'll put them in here, and people can just keep sharing. Um, and don't worry about whether or not this will be a perfect solution right away. At this phase, we're just trying to figure out what are some possibilities. Um, and maybe once you have a sketch, bring it to the user and say, um, do you think this would be easy for you to do? Um, did I maybe fill the chart out wrong or, or remember something wrong? Um, just have them kind of see what it is that you're about to do so they're getting excited about what they can expect. And once you've got something, an idea that you want to make, um, you can start making a prototype. And that's where things start getting really super fun because uh, now you literally just can grab a bunch of cardboard and aluminum foil and your makey makey and just try to make something that resembles or gets the concept of that interface across. It doesn't need to work perfectly. It can fall apart after one or two uses because what you're trying to do is prove that the idea works. Um, so just try to do something that functions and then in the future, we can upgrade the materials to be stronger, to be more hygienic, to be more comfortable with foam and that kind of thing. Uh, but we should really focus on um, not getting too far ahead of ourselves because each step that we take in this process, um, there will be small changes of when you're making something, you realize, oh, that doesn't quite work as well as I thought it would. Or you just realize that, oh, I could probably use zip ties to hold this together rather than tape everything together. Um, so your ideas will change slightly, um, and the more you can kind of step one step at a time through this whole process, um, you don't have to uh, get bummed out when something doesn't work. You can change in the middle while you're working. Um, so to show you an example, I made the, uh, the judo chop interface, the very first one that was on that instructable, and I literally just took some cardboard and wrapped aluminum foil around it, uh, and I used the Makey Makey to clip on to these two metal contacts. And so you can see right away, this isn't exactly what was in that drawing. The drawing had one contact and a wristband or something on the user. Um, but as soon as I was making this, I realized, why does the user need to be wired up when if this is on a person's armrest on their wheelchair and their arm is just weighing down, their forearm is naturally touching other parts of the entire armrest. So if these two pieces of aluminum foil are separated in some way, um, your arm will do all the work of contacting these two things together. So you can wire one of these up to Earth and one of these up to any of the Makey Makey functions. And whenever you just naturally rest your arm on the armrest, it'll trigger the action for you. So right away, it was different than what I had planned, but I can see that it was better already. Um, so once you've got a prototype that's working well, just take this cardboard piece, whatever you have, uh, and bring it to the user and uh, have them do it for a day or so and see if um, it's really tedious for them to do. Maybe it's uncomfortable. Um, doesn't actually do what they want it to do. And what you're really specifically looking for is like, um, like this armrest thing. Are they going to be accidentally hitting it when they're relaxed? Uh, they don't have. You need to make an interface that they don't have to be in the zone or focused on doing it right to make it work. Um, the interface should be built on what they do normally, naturally. So it should get out of their way when they're relaxing. Um, so something like this, um, if this was kind of hanging off to the side of the armrest, so that when they kind of put their arms down, it's not fully reaching the gap, but if they move their hand to the right or left just a tiny bit or just tilted or rolled their hand, then it might work better. Um, just work with the user uh, to see what that person needs. Everyone needs some customization, and that'll inform the next steps of the process. Um, because now, once you actually have a prototype and you've tested it with the user and you've got their seal of approval, um, now you can go nuts on bulletproofing your interface. So you can upgrade the materials. You've got your concept figured out. Um, and an easy way to do this is um, grab some scraps of wood and replace the cardboard with wood. Start there. Uh, maybe sand the wood, paint it, do something comfortable with it, wrap it in foam or fabric. Uh, there's a lot of examples that I'll have. Um, 
just go to your hardware store and try to find things that resemble it, but look a little more durable, things like PVC pipes or um, wooden dowels, um, things that you can play with and hack more easily uh, and customize in the future. Um, so the first thing I did once I thought, okay, this cardboard thing is already kind of falling apart after a day of play, um, I just grabbed some scrap wood, and I instead of using aluminum foil directly, uh, one of my new favorite materials is I swapped out the aluminum foil with aluminum foil tape. And you can buy this stuff at almost any hardware store. They use it to seal up ducts in um, heating and air conditioning systems. And this literally is aluminum foil uh, with adhesive on it. It's tape. So it's really, really helpful to make a slightly more durable um, and easier to use metal contact. Um, if you really want to start getting crazy, you can use uh, conductive paints, conductive fabrics, conductive threads. You can buy foam that conducts electricity. Um, I have some examples in my Instructable, some resources that I have found that you can, um, you can follow. And I know I'm leaving out some things. Um, is anybody aware of any more durable materials besides like aluminum foil tape? That could still scratch. And if you scratch it, then it's going to start peeling and there's like a point of no return eventually. Um, but I don't, I'm trying to think of anything that's you can buy at a hardware store that's not going to cut the user or hurt the user, um, but it's going to conduct electricity well over time. So generally, any small metal object uh, could be in that category, right? So you could imagine um, just like a little metal you know, a bracket or something. As long as it's not coated in such a way that it's not conductive, that should work, and you can clip right onto it. Um, Maybe even solder to it, if that's going to work better. Um, but I was going to say, I really uh, have become a heavy purchaser of disposable baking pans. Ah. Because those are, are super useful. So they come in a variety of sizes. There's these little foil pans, but they're kind of a thicker foil than the aluminum foil. So they'll hold their shape. Um, and they're great for workshops because they're fairly cheap, but you can, and so you can cut them and shape them. Um, you, will, you will get sharp edges if you do it a certain way, but um, it's just a slightly more robust material than aluminum foil by itself. Definitely. Are these kind of like the, um, the metal pie tins that I'm thinking of? Yeah. Yeah, disposable uh, aluminum foil baking yeah. pans. Yeah, um, yeah, I think there's Little a... Little ones, huge ones. There's a really awesome uh, video. It's like 30 seconds long. Go on there. It's, yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing, totally. <laughs> So this woman, I, I was uh, happily surprised because, um, you know, you wouldn't think she's a technology person. You can see she's kind of being ginger with it. She's not sure. Um, but the technology is accessible enough that she can be like, this is fun. I can experiment and play with things. And she makes a solution that um, is really obvious to her. Um, and those are the kinds of solutions that you should be looking for are things that anybody can look at and go, oh, that's pretty cool. I want to use that. So you know, this isn't just for engineers who have to make really solid, awesome solutions. Um, remember that um, users, uh, more than almost anything else, um, they, they will benefit from having fun. So if their interface has an element of fun in it, um, oh, yeah. they'll use it more. So going on the idea of like a metal bracket or a hardware store thing. Or like uh, a piece of, you know, like a fork or a spoon or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, oh, those um, sponges that are like a metal, kind of a mesh. They're a little sparkly looking. Yes. They're just, you know, they're next to the foam sponges. Steel wool. Um, but there, there's a variety of those that are conductive, and they work great. Actually, especially because they make good, uh, they have very high surface area, you know, because they're crinkly. So they, they make good contact with your, with your skin. That's um, a great idea. I haven't tried, this is like a steel wool that I'm thinking of, right? Kind of like it's a, like that, but um, just the, the scrubby sponges. It's not the same as steel wool. Oh, okay, so it's more um, like a household kind of thing. But a similar texture. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's yes. an awesome idea. Yeah, for a kitchen sink. Cool. Those work great. Yeah, um, and these kinds of things, because we're talking about wood and hardware store objects and hobby store objects, um, you know, have fun with the user. Like, paint it covered in stickers. Like, make things that are fun yeah. to look at. 
Um, and if they actually have customized their thing, you'd be amazed. Um, like every single person who has uh, prosthetic devices, I was just watching a video maybe like a week or two ago uh, where someone had printed out like a new kind of robot hand, one of these uh, 3D printable $50 robot arms. Um, and one of the first things that this kid does when, he, when she gets it is she goes, can you print that off in pink? <laughs> like, now nice. that it's pink, it's the same exact thing, like, functionally, uh, but she just loves using it. She loves showing it to all of her friends. Uh, and she, instead of going to school feeling like she has, like, a, a mannequin arm attached to her and she's embarrassed, um, she feels like she's cooler than the kids around her because she has this thing that other kids, um, they don't get to use. So... Um, make sure that the kid is, is pumped about using it. It's, it's not too hard to do. They can participate with you in the design, of course, and that, that also carries a lot of meaning with it, not just decoration, but really shaping the, the core functionality of it. Yeah, you know, what I see a lot in the professional uh, AT world is uh, there's this kind of artificial separation of the people that know and the people that don't know. Mm. Uh, there's kind of like a, pre a new priesthood of uh, technologists out there. It's not just AT. It's, it's in every field where uh, you go to the car mechanic because that guy went to school. Um, he knows his stuff. Uh, but with technology, you can Google it. You can play with it. And with the Makey Makey, uh, for 50 bucks and found materials, um, you and the user and anyone else can work together to learn new things. And it's I think it's a a new model for not just education and AT, but um, for how we consume things, how we work together. So uh, I encourage people to have the users, the intended audience, included in the entire design process uh, because that serves uh, the empowerment role. They get to feel like they are um, they have a say in what they're going to be able to use in the future. Uh, but they also have a, there's a functional goal that, um, they they have a, a real um, you know ability to give feedback and say um, why not do it this way I don't want to use it that way um, and that can that can make them feel a lot better about the exact same same work you'd be amazed at how little sometimes uh, people are involved um, sometimes the person who's in charge you know they'll use they'll they'll find the person they know what that person can do they know all these things ahead of time. And they go, oh, they should benefit from this eye tracking software. So they, they buy a $10,000 piece of equipment, and the person, they have to spend three, three to five months with a professional by their side being trained on how to use this thing. And what happens when that person doesn't love using that thing? Um, well, now they're kind of stuck. They have to use that thing. So uh, they will, you know, they'll find ways of being human. They'll be well, I'll use it for one hour a day, you know, I'll do this. Um, but if they're involved in this process from start to finish and they're really excited, um, your thing will probably, you'll probably need to make like two or three of these because they might use them so much that they kind of wear down or uh, get used a lot. So make a lot of alternative interfaces that are like, today I want to have a red one, today I want to have a green one. Um, small things like um, one day they have a bracket from like a, um, uh, like a cabinet in the kitchen. The next day they could have a doorknob that they have to turn. Um, just keep replacing the objects and they can kind of have a renewed sense of um, discovery as they go. Um, so what I did was I had that aluminum foil tape. And I taped it onto this piece and it worked, but immediately I made this thing and I was like, wait, now how do I wire up the makey makey? Like, that means that every time this person has to use this or wants to use this, we got to spend about five, ten minutes of running some cables around them and finding a place to put the Mankey Mankey that they're not going to run over it or step on it. Um, so the obvious solution was just to make a longer one, <laughs> make a bigger one, same exact idea. But this way I can zip tie the Mankey Mankey onto it. And I ran cables and folded over the aluminum foil tape so that it just clips onto um, these contacts. So essentially, this is a completely self-contained interface. Um, you can make a bunch of these different things, and when the user wants to do something like a check an email or use something for a day, just break this thing out of the, the closet. You can strap it onto their wheelchair arm, 
and they can start using it without having to do anything extra. Uh, and if they need to move, you can clip it off and get going. It's worth noting that, uh, so that becomes just a USB device. You just run the cable from that thing to the computer. And it's worth noting that you can have uh, a bunch of those potentially connected to the same computer without um, conflict. For sure. And last Tuesday, I was doing a prototype of this kind of workshop. Uh, with some teachers and um, out at a K through 12 school in St. Paul, and the first thing they asked was, "So how do I reprogram this to do other keys?" I was like, "Whoa, I wasn't expecting you to ask that." And I said, "You actually can. Like, I'll show you some links." And like, it's been about a week, and they've already um, kind of reconfigured their device uh, to hit a couple different keys. And I'm like, "I did not think that would be accessible." But what happened was the students that were there they were using it in a class, and they were more comfortable with programming. So when I left, I gave them a link. The kids taught the teachers how to do this, and they're all just loving it. So That's fantastic uh, to hear. Wow. The, the reprogramming part is not as easy as we'd like. I feel like uh, future things like this hopefully will be easier to, to reconfigure, but it's great to hear that people are doing it. Yeah, I saw recently that there was the um, the Kickstarter project. The I think it was called Mod Kit that's going on. I'm excited about that. It's it's kind of a visual reprogramming thing. So they want to support the Makey Makey. I believe it was one of those stretch goals that they had. Um, and so you can actually click on the Makey Makey, like a picture of it on your computer, and reprogram it just with your mouse. That looked pretty cool. Um, yeah, that kind of thing is exciting. I don't know if that particular one has come to fruition yet. Uh, the mod kit folks are, uh, they're great. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, if nothing else, um, they're showing that people want it. So if they don't make it, somebody will make something like that in the next year, year and a half, something like that. Um, it's, it's in demand, so it's going to be yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, heck, there might even be like a scratch module that allows you to do that. Who knows? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I know, right? Um, well, let me think if there's anything else. Um, we talked a little bit about um, improving the prototype, um, and I believe that's pretty much the last thing. So um, what I would encourage people to do at this point is um, just start making stuff. Buy one of these kits for 50 bucks and start messing around. Uh, I have an, an example that I've forgotten to show um, that you don't actually have to use uh, nothing but metal objects. Um, you can also use uh, certain kinds of pencils. Um, I've tried one at home, and it kind of worked, but I think I used the wrong kind of pencil, maybe a mechanical pencil, but if you have something that has lead in it, I believe, uh, that'll conduct electricity, and you can literally draw an interface on a piece of paper. Um, and this kind of thing, it's great for prototyping, it's great for playing around, and believe it or not, just by using alligator clip wires to clip on to the sides of this and run it to my Makey Makey, whenever I touch these bars when I'm hooked up to the ground, um, it'll do those things for me. And all i got to do is draw what I want to press. Um, it's true. Um, so yeah, it's the graphite and the pencil that's slightly electrically conductive. You have to draw very dark, thick lines. Uh, it helps to draw with the paper on a very... Uh, hard flat surface um, and then not to like crease the paper at all because that can break the connection. Um, there are also these conductive paints out there that you can get. I wish they were cheaper. Um, there's a company called Bear Conductive that makes one that works great with Makey Makey. Um, there's also a company called Less EMF that makes a very similar paint, slightly cheaper. Uh, it's just not designed really to be uh, uh, a paint for this purpose. They make electromagnetic shielding paint but it turns out it's basically the same thing so right. you can you can make makey makey interfaces with that too. Um, art yeah. stores also have graphite pe pencils that are all graphite with no wood. So I'm pretty sure you could use it directly if you wanted to. So yeah, yeah that would work nicely. Um, oh, and there's also a new thing called Circuit Scribe, which is yes. a conductive pen. Also, unfortunately, fairly pricey, uh, but that's a silver-based ink, uh, and that works amazingly well. Awesome. Also, you need not even very much of it to make a touchable, interactive uh, drawing. Nice. Yeah, I've heard a few of those, and um, 
you can go to sites like adafruit.com and sparkfun.com, and yep. you can find all of these things. I, I do recommend highly the um, uh, the Bear Conductive. They have these pens and circuit scribe, where they have pens. Um, they're like, what, 10, 20 bucks for like a pen, something like that. Um, but the fact that you can draw um, things that you can just start right away using, uh, it, it can be worth it if you're making one-off things like this. Because paper, you can bend it, you can fold it, you can do arts and crafts with it. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's people at, um, you know, at MIT that there are, at the High Low Tech Group, they're doing like pop-up books using um, conductive thread and, and fabric and, and paint. And um, I have some other objects. There's a, a woman named uh, Anne Marie Thomas who teaches, I believe, at Minnesota University, something like that. Um, she invented the squishy circuits. You know that person? Yeah, I forget the name. Uh, University of St. Thomas, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, she, uh, Anne Marie's my friend. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, with her research assistants, her graduate students, um, they figured out a way to make flat like dough, like play dough, uh, that is conductive or not conductive, just by adding uh, things you'd buy at a grocery store, like um, I think it's like uh, like tartar sauce and uh, lime juice, like random it's, things like this. I don't know the exact ingredients. It's yeah. worth noting that off the shelf regular play dough is pretty conductive. As oh, far as making things yeah. concerned, the great prototyping material. Uh, the stuff that Anne Marie has done is conductive enough to actually like light up an LED to make circuits uh, with. So um, that also works great with making making. That's a good thing to know. The play dough is available everywhere. You can get that anywhere. Oh yeah. So part of Shelly and I's uh, possibility box, we were shipped uh, a really nice collection of objects and things to use over the summer. So we've got one of those squishy circuit kits. So oh, cool. We have the recipe in there, and the recipe is available online if you search for squishy circuits. Um, you can find an actual recipe where you cook this stuff in a pot, uh, and you can make... Um, so you, the, the nice thing is you can make the conductive Play-Doh, um, but you can also make the insulating Play-Doh. So you can kind of separate things, and they won't touch or uh, cross. So that can be really helpful. Um, other things that I found that you might remember from, like, um, Shelly's Cat Piano... Uh, she used this copper tape, which, again, yeah. you can buy this at um, hobby stores and gardening stores. Believe it or not, people use this quite a bit. Um, you can line your flower beds with this, and it'll keep snails out of it. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's where you I've buy it. I bought so. it on electronics sites. Um, the ones you right. mentioned before, sparkfun.com and adafruit.com, they have it as well. It's, uh, it is... Worth being careful as you use that copper tape. You, it, the edges can be sharp sometimes, uh, but it's very convenient material for this purpose too. I've used that a lot as well. That's good to know. I haven't tried it out yet, so I'm gonna get going right away for sure. Um, I think that's all the stuff that I have on my table of things to show. Um, so at this point, um, it's kind of up to you guys of what you want to learn. Um, on my instructable, I'm trying to have uh, encourage a little bit of discourse, so uh, if you have ideas for anything, making improvements on things, um, materials that I haven't listed, um, experiences that you've had, like really good interfaces that worked for a specific scenario, um, I highly encourage sharing just a photo and a note of um, your experiences, and that'll help. That's very people. valuable, yeah. Uh, it's amazing how little work uh, you can do now uh, with the with the age of the internet, like to me, as a student, as a graduate student, um, compared to what I could do, uh, you know, I could spend a year trying to get something published uh, and try to get this like one really specific idea to be accepted by my community. Um, but what I did this semester was I spent about three weeks making an instructable, and I put it online, and I talked to my professors, and I'm like, so why should I publish? And they go, oh, because you can share. And I show them this, and I'm like, well, I've got 15,000 people in a week that have been using this, and they're like, what? <laughs> it's wonderful, yeah. Really so sharing really cool. is caring, for sure. <laughs> and a little goes a long way, too. Um, compared to other things, there are fewer examples, especially visual, visual examples, of assistive technology projects with Makey Makey. Um, 
and it's wonderful. It's always wonderful to see them. So I'd love to see more, uh, you know, photos and video of, of things that people do. Yeah, and like you said, it's so easy. Um, I think we're coming into an age right now where people are sharing a lot um, of their personal lives, um, and I hope we can start encouraging social media of um, important things like uh, professional yeah. solutions. Literally, just that can help other people. If you just put a, a photo, like an Instagram photo on Facebook or on a, on Twitter and you hashtag with Makey Makey, you know, Eric will find it probably. And, you know, if it's a really cool thing, it, it's even if you reach like 100 people just by posting a photo online, that's five minutes of your time. And you could reach just one person who sees that and goes, oh, my gosh, I didn't know you could do that. And you can yeah. literally have an impact on a human to human level. So And even if it feels like, oh, I just made this really simple, modest project, that's actually could be even more powerful because it could show someone else that they could do it too. Exactly. Um, we're in the age of technology now where um, things are so complex uh, that they're like people start feeling like if they don't go to school for four years and they're not a nerd, um, that they can't take advantage of what is available. Um, but with kids like this, with, with a community online, the Makers Movement, um, everyone is creative in some way. And just by looking at stuff, if you just Google the term Makey Makey Projects or go to the Makey Makey website, they have a project section, you will find professional musicians making music with fruit and, and water. Uh, but you'll also find like elementary school kids and middle school kids like learning how to do things that a lot of adults don't know how to do, but they're learning by playing with technology. So there's a lot we could all learn from that. Hey, Jason, you didn't mention your uh, your add-on board that you designed. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, last fall, um, this workshop and this Instructable was kind of based on a contest entry that I had made for the Makey Makey How-To Contest. Um, and I had proposed making a little backpack for the circuit board uh, because I noticed that some people, um, they may have some difficulty, especially if they're making, they want to make an interface that um, isn't held together by tape and hot glue. If they want to make something that's kind of more bulletproof, um, what you would do to access most of the functions of the Makey Makey on the back side are these walls. And you can use those bare wires to connect to them. Um, and they work fantastic for prototyping and, and testing ideas. Um, but sometimes people, uh, they get a little frustrated because they might fall out or they can bump them or cut them. Um, accidents happen pretty easily because of how small they are. Um, so to make it more durable, uh, I've made a, um, a little backpack circuit board that goes to the back side. And there will be headers attached to this so that this will actually physically clip onto these four walls in the back. It snaps right on, and it turns all of the functions from wire headers into more alligator clip pairs. Um, so if you want to access anything on the back, uh, there's you can actually move the mouse directly on the back, which is a super, super cool function. Um, imagine how hard that is to do with most other interfaces. Um, so with this little backpack circuit board, uh, you can buy this. I'll probably sell them for about $10. Um, I'm gathering funds so I can start producing a, manu a small manufacturing run of these. Um, That's and fantastic. I'll start selling them. So once I have money, I'll order 50 of these or so. And uh, you can just email me directly for now. Um, or on the Instructable, when I'm ready to start selling these, I will start selling them probably on tindy.com. Uh, and you can find a link through the Instructable uh, when they're ready to go. So these will probably cost about $10, um, and you can buy a bunch of these. I'll probably offer like classroom discounts if you want to buy 10 of them. I'll make them cheap so you can buy them. Um, and yeah, once it's clipped onto the back side of this, it's not going anywhere. So um, that might help you if you want to access some of the more advanced stuff on the back. Cool. Well, I think I have covered everything somehow, and it's been about an hour exactly, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, does anybody have any um, questions, examples, um, anything they want to share before we log off? Have you seen a lot of um, other AT interfaces that I, I haven't seen? Like I've tried to look for prior work for things to link to, um, 
it, so if you if you can see if you know some links, um, I believe someone I forgot who it was. I think it was Adafruit. I went on their show and tell last week, and they had mentioned like, oh yeah, we made a series of tutorials or videos um, about how to use technology to make AT. Uh, and I'm like, wow, I totally missed that. So uh, if there are any things, uh, there are tons and tons of websites and forums out there for um, assistive technology. But the problem is that they are centered on um, academics and professionals. So it can be really hard to penetrate the language of some of these websites. There's a lot of abbreviations, a lot of um, uh, prior knowledge that you may have to know. So it can be really hard to just jump right into that kind of environment. Um, so if there are any kind of um, user to user uh, places that I could find, if you have any links or examples, I'd be happy to add those to the Instructable for more places to learn. So I think that pretty much covers it. So <laughs> I guess we will wrap it up. Um, Great. Thanks for this uh, really wonderful work that you're doing, Jason. I think it will help a lot of people. Awesome. I'm glad to hear. I'm, I'm very glad you're able to drop by. It's nice to have you. My yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, Shelly and Luke for joining. And if anybody is watching, magical people on the Internet, that's awesome. So uh, thanks for being a part of it. And uh, hopefully you'll learn something. <laughs> also, also, you know when you were talking about the uh, prosthetic hand? Or uh, for the 3D printer, yeah. my professor actually worked on it at Creative. Yeah, is that Jorge Zuniga? Well, yeah, him and uh, Tim Guthrie helped him. Uh, I part. we'll chat in a little while. I <laughs> I've met Tim once, and I, yes. he's one of the reasons why I'm moving to Omaha. So oh, really? He's I, like my favorite professor. <laughs> yeah, there's there's he's like the only professional like legit maker in Nebraska as an educator. So. <laughs> yeah, Omaha is a good place to be. So, yeah, we'll be geeking out about that on the summer for sure. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so um, I about wraps it up. You know, speaking of, of schools, I had actually applied to the MIT Media Lab this last year, and that's pretty much the only place that I would consider going and getting a, a PhD or continue in academia for. Um, so it's like, it's a good group of people to have on. It's very cool to have someone from from the Media Lab, the, one of the creators of the board. So it's great to have all of you. Cool. All right. Well, good night. I'll see you guys whenever. Okay. <laughs> have a good one. Bye-bye. Have a good one. <laughs>